Hi, how are you? Hi. Yeah, he looks like a good man, but you good man as well, eh? <laughs> so hello and welcome to Kathmandu, Nepal. Today we are going to explore a little bit of Tamil, which is the area that we are in now. We're going to make our way down to Durbar Square and go and taste some good Nepal food. Yeah, we're also going to go and explore a little bit around. And our mission today is in order to try some momos, which is a popular dish to have here in Nepal. But this is the Tamil area. You can actually see there's a lot of hiking shops here to the left there you can buy some shoes and yeah some more stuff but there's so many shops in the streets and yeah they even have wires holding the lights this area is actually quite nice at night but it's very very cool if you want to do your shopping before you go hiking definitely a lot of shops here in order to get yeah. all of your gear yeah there's a lot of stuff we're heading down that way to go to Durbar Square as it's a little bit more south of the Tamil area Streets are not so busy, but bikes and cars do cross. <laughs> yeah, it gets crazy because they're quite narrow. So when there are cars and bikes and people trying to walk, there's not space for all of them together. As you can see, we're actually walking on the road as there's not actually pathways for you to walk on. All the pathways just lead straight into shops. So you can't exactly walk. You have to walk in the streets. <laughs> hey, here's one of those things that we want to take to ride. Here's one here. Should we ask this guy? I don't know, it doesn't seem like there's a guy on here. But check, it's like a little bicycle rickshaw. And they look like so much fun to take. Yeah, there's a guy. I wonder how much he's going to charge us. Namaste. Yes. Namaste, how are you? Yeah, yeah can I help you, rickshaw? How much to Durbar Square? Durbar Square. Durbar Square. Okay. Nepali good price, 500 rupees. 500 Two rupees? Yes. Yeah. But it's only one kilometer. Two people. Only one kilometer, eh? Okay. <laughs> What's what's best price? Good price Nepali. Yes. Five hundred rupees. Five hundred and how much to Durbar Square? Hey, sir. Four. He say four hundred and he looks okay, like a okay, nice okay, man. Okay, okay. No, I like him. I like him. <laughs> okay, he's, a, he's an old man. I support the old guy. <laughs> Hi, how are you? Yeah. He looks like a good man, but you good man as well, eh? <laughs> Thank you, South Africa. South Africa. South Africa, yes. What is your name? Daniel. Daniel? Yes. I am Raju. Rajun? Yeah. Nice Raju, to... Raju. Raju. Yeah. Raju, nice to meet you, hey? Okay. Thank you. Okay. <laughs> What's your name? Bhopal. Bhopal. Bhopal, nice to meet you. Thank you. This guy's got a little bit of rain okay, cover. Okay, talk to no problem. Woo! <laughs> okay, let's do this. There we go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I got the bag. Can we both put in here? There we go. It's oh, a little okay. bit of a tight squeeze, but <laughs> <laughs> We have at least rain cover here. At least we small people. Thank you, Gopal. <laughs> Check, from in here we don't really have a good view. <laughs> but we're protected from the rain. <laughs> so for us to see outside, we gotta like bend our necks here. <laughs> But yeah, he's got a little bit of an umbrella <laughs> and then he's like kind of tied a piece of material over the umbrella just to protect him from the rain. And then ours is kind of made of like bamboo. This looks like bamboo, eh? Yeah. And a piece of like cloth or material. And then here at the back we even have a window so we can see what's happening behind us. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think he can because he doesn't have any rear view mirror. He's got a mirror. Does he have a mirror? Yeah, there's a mirror. <laughs> there's a small mirror right there. We at least won't get ridden over by any traffic because we're in our little own bicycle rickshaw. <laughs> it's safe this way, hey Gopal? Yes. <laughs> How long have you been doing this, Gopal? Uh, Hello. Oh, 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 oh. Hey, my beep, friend. Beep, beep, beep. Beep, beep. <laughs> you don't have Huta? Yeah. He's got a, a bell there. Yeah. Ding, nice. ding. How old are you? Me? Yes. 50, 65. 65? Yeah. Sure. sure. Yeah. You are strong for doing this at Thank 65. You. <laughs> Thank you for taking us around. It seems a bit tough to like ride this thing. I think it's only got one gear, as I can see there in front. And on his handlebars, he doesn't really have other gears. Only one gear, Gopal. Yeah. One gear, hey? Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> But here we are going through Tamil in yes. Nepal, Kathmandu. Stuck in a bit of traffic now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, let's go, let's go. Move traffic. Move. I think this is best to have a scooter and not a car because then you're really stuck. Yeah, yeah. Am I saying it right? 
Many temples. Many temples at Durbar Square. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Gopal, I think too much traffic. I think we're going to walk. Uh, just walk in the far way. No, it's fine. Otherwise, you wait no long time. No problem. But I still pay you, no problem. Okay. But I think we're going to walk, take long time. Yes, okay. Okay. Thank you, Gopal. I think we're going to walk from here. Traffic seems a bit hectic. <laughs> but thank you, Gopal. You're gonna turn around now, eh? I'll give you 500. That's fine. Thank you, Gopal. Hey, look after yourself. <laughs> wow! Look at this. There's just so much traffic. Oh. Let's get past this. I don't think the little bicycle rickshaw or bicycle tuk tuk. Whatever you call it is going to get to you anytime soon. Go sweetie, go! <laughs> I don't know what's happening here. No. But it seems like chaos and Durbar Square is about 400 meters that way and I don't think he's going to get through this at all. Oh, oh, move out of the traffic. The streets are so narrow. I think that's because there's a four-way crossing here and there's no stop streets or like traffic lights so everyone's just going and taking their turn. Yeah. yeah it doesn't seem like they have any traffic lights here so you kind of just got to choose. And he's got to go down this road. Oh. Which I don't think is going to be possible. Look down there. Alright, Jay Ball Square. Here we come. Here we come. <laughs> Fighting the traffic first. Slowly but surely. <laughs> Just watch, just watch. Hey, brother. Thank you. <laughs> Yo, they really don't give you any gaps here. <laughs> you kind of just got to walk. Hey, freedom. I think we're out of the worst of it. <laughs> well, here we have made it to Durbar Square. Oh. I think we've got to go to this ticket counter, yeah? Yeah. Alright, this ticket counter? Yeah. Okay, thank you. Step into Durbar Square. Yes. No, no, I'm not giving anything. Oh, okay. I just want to give you information about this area. Is um, I know about this area. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Hi, how are you? I'm fine. I'm good. Uh, just tickets for two people, please. Here you go. Thank you. Is that good? Thank you. <laughs> that way. That way, hey. And we're okay. a tour guide. From um, I don't need a tour guide. Thank you, man. Thank you so much, Thank eh? Thank you so much. <laughs> so we've done our research beforehand about this place so that we don't need a guide. Because it's sometimes very difficult to form with guides and the information gets confusing, I feel. And to be honest, there's only one thing we really want to see here in Durbar Square. But before we go there, we're going to go and get that snack. Yeah, some Laping. <laughs> yeah, this is just a, a little bit of Durbar Square. You can see around here, there's just so many temples. And traffic, I didn't think cars were allowed in here. Are you ready? Oh gosh. Oh my word, traffic again. <laughs> whoa, whoa. Straight, straight. Straight, that way? Yeah. Hello, that's right. Namaste. <laughs> no, thank you. <laughs> I don't need rickshaw. It's like in the square, it's a continuation of the city. I didn't think that cars and bikes would actually be allowed to drive through here. Instead, I thought it would be like cornered off, but it feels like a continuation of the city. So what we've been looking for is Le Ping House. So there it is. Apparently they have very good reviews on Google and that is why we have chosen to come here to taste Le Ping. My ears are on all alert for all the sounds around me. How do we enter? I think we got to go in here. There we go. Hello. Is this Le Ping? Le Ping? Ah, thank you. Hey, what's up? Hi, what's up? How are you? Good. So this is the area. I think we have to go upstairs here. Climb the stairs to go to Le Ping House. Oh, this is pretty cool. And here we are. Hello, how are you? Good. Is this Le Ping House? Yes. Which is the best Le Ping? We have not had Le Ping before. Noodles. The noodles Le Ping? Okay. Yes, please. Uh, yeah. If you recommend that. <laughs> Thank you. 
never tasted it, so I will go on local recommendations. It seems like such a small restaurant. There's only like three tables in here. <laughs> but they got good reviews, so I'm sure it's going to be good. Is this Laping? Yes. Oh, okay, awesome. awesome. Thank you. Oh, I did not know it was a soup. I knew that it was made out of noodles, so it's supposed to be like a spicy bean noodle and have like some chilies, but you can see it almost has these, I don't know, crunchy stuff at the top. <laughs> All in a soup. It's almost like a chips, like a noodle type thing, and then there's the noodles inside. And with the name La Ping, La is cold, and Ping is like a jelly type substance, so this dish is actually served cold. And then the noodles are supposed to be quite jelly-like. This is actually a Tibetan dish, but it has become popular in Nepal to have. So let's give it a taste. Mm. Oh wow. There's so much flavors in there. Definitely got a bite to it, but not overpowering. And then the noodles are slippery and jelly-like, but then this crunchy stuff at the top gives it this nice crunch. So it's all of these textures and flavors in your mouth, which is pretty good. Nice snack. Mm. That's a crunchy, spicy soup. <laughs> that is nice. <laughs> Very spicy. <laughs> Sorry. Do you have Coca-Cola? Yeah. Uh, two, please. Yes, please. Thank, Thank you. you gonna need something to drink after. <laughs> this Do you find it really spicy? It has got a kick to it, yes. Really? Mm. I'm not finding it too spicy. I think after traveling to India and Sri Lanka and Pakistan, my taste buds have gotten used to the spice now. Mine have not, eh? <laughs> <laughs> mm. So you decided to order normal laping, which doesn't have as much soup in. So if you look inside there, there's all of the crunchiness over there. <laughs> And you can see it's quite a big noodle actually that makes up this dish. Let's give it a try. Mm. Mm. This one's definitely more crunchy compared to the one that's in the soup, but I quite like the soup. Maybe dipping this in the sauce would be good. Mm -hmm. <laughs> mm. That is nice. That is really, really nice. Definitely a good tasty snack though. It's giving us some energy to go and explore some of Kathmandu. There you go, 250. Thank you so much, eh? Yes, for you. Right, so now that our tummies are satisfied with the La Ping, we are going to explore Durba Square. But what we have come here to explore is probably the most popular building in all of Kathmandu and probably the main reason why people actually come to Durba Square. When we got our tickets, they actually gave us this map in order to navigate Durbar Square. There are over 50 temples within inside the square, so I think a map is definitely needed in order to find your way around, otherwise I think you get quite lost. <laughs> we are looking, wait baby, come here. Hold that for me. We are looking to go over there, and I think we're close. We are somewhere around here. Yeah, I think it's over there. Okay. Namaste. Hi, hi, hi. Namaste. <laughs> Namaste. Okay. And here we are. We have found it. Let's go and get around to the front of it to give you a better look at what we're looking at. There we go. Wow. Look at that. This is the Kumari Gar. So the reason the Kumari Gar is so popular is because it's believed to be the home of the living goddess Kumari. And now why they say a living goddess is because it's believed that goddess Teleju actually incarnated the Kumari. And this Kumari is a young child. And why it's a young child is because the Kumari is believed to be pure and supposed to be a virgin. So the goddess incarnates her until she's hit puberty. And then once she's hit puberty, it's believed that the goddess leaves her and then they have to choose choose a whole nother Kumari again and this cycle or this procedure in order to choose a new Kumari is actually such a vigorous process because this child that is selected actually needs to reach 32 criteria in order to become the Kumari. They also say that the Kumari sometimes pops out of these windows over here and then when they see her they believe that they get blessings and good luck upon them so sometimes people just stand here in hopes to actually see the living goddess Kumari. I don't think we're gonna see her today 
So, yeah, we're not going to stand here forever <laughs> and try and see if we can see her because I think the chances are very rare. But it's really such a pretty building. I love all the carvings that are just around all the windows and doors. Now, the buildings around here are actually said to be about 200 years old. I mean, this Durbar Square here has been here since the 13th century. But then they built these buildings between the 13th and the 18th century. Unfortunately, due to the earthquake in 2015, which is exactly eight years from today, it's the 25th of April, they had to rebuild some of them because they actually got destroyed. And the reason some of them are still under construction, like this one over there, is because they need to be built in the exact same fashion as they were before, or in the same state before. So I think it's going to take a while because the skill to build such buildings are kind of lost and I think it's going to be a difficult one to make it look exactly the way it was. Yeah, we can see some of the temples still being built. They're actually using bamboo. Such an old form of scaffolding. But bamboo is so strong, so I think it's fine. But we are so used to steel today and to see this is mainly only seen in Asia. <laughs> Check out the doggy, he's just sitting Where? there. Hey bro. <laughs> Are you building the temple? <laughs> Dogs. He's guarding the temple. <laughs> but let's go this way because there's something else that we want to see this side. There's not many things we want to see in this Durbar Square. Yeah, you can see something's also been destroyed due to the earthquake. I mean, a lot of these buildings are built in the style with the red bricks. They're not very strong as they were built a long time ago and they didn't use a lot of steel. So these structures basically collapsed in the earthquake and this one was just completely broken let's just get up close to one of these buildings just to see the carving on it i mean this is old it's old i feel like it's a that's a wood piece but all the design is all over the place even on top there i actually don't feel safe standing underneath this thing it doesn't feel like it's put together <laughs> so well that's really pretty the details are so intricate but yeah, you can just see the design of these temples around here. I think here is a more historical part of Durbar Square. As you can see, so many buildings and pigeons. Run through the pigeon, oh, no, baby. I don't want to run through the pigeons. They scare me. <laughs> but we're looking, ah, here it is. We're looking for this statue over here. But this statue is believed to be the fierce form of Lord Shiva, which is a Hindu god. And apparently they used to use this statue as like a supreme court back in the day because it's believed that if you stand in front of the statue you cannot tell a lie because if you tell a lie then you are certain for death so they used to bring people here in order to get the truth out of them because they would tell the truth by standing in front of that statue so I have so, a question for you no I have a question, I for, have you. A question for you okay okay do you love me I do love you no. Thank you. If you're lying, then you're dying. I was going to ask you the same question. <laughs> you. Do you love me? You're dead. I wonder if people actually get married in front of this statue. Just for security reasons, <laughs> eh? But look at the color of it. It's got beautiful blue colors on it. The face is quite scary and it's got a few arms. So I can imagine why it is called the fierce god or the fierce, the fierce, force. The fierce force of Lord Shiva. This building actually looks like it's in an old British style. Yeah, it doesn't quite seem to fit the rest of the styles yeah, around here. Yeah, I know. Like, that looks old. That looks like 18th century. But this looks maybe early 90s. It could be a new building. It also just doesn't fit the rest of the styles. No. But I don't know what this one means. But, yeah, I don't think we're going to know, like, a thousand eight hundred years worth of history just in one day. Especially on 50 different types of temples. <laughs> yeah. Yo, look how huge that one is. Oh, wow. Check that one. That one is huge. I'm trying to look on my map which one this is, but I'm not too sure. Which one could this be? They have pictures here on the map, so I'm trying Let's to Let's see where they're there. That's the big one, number 10. Number 10. Yeah, and sure, check out the size of that oh, one on the map. yeah. It's the Teleju Temple. So it's the Goddess Teleju's Temple. Cool. This temple stands 36.6 meters high. I wonder if we can go stand in front of it just to check the front. It seems like this side is the front area. I think we're exiting the Durbar Square now. I think a little bit. I think this whole part is still a little bit part yes, of the Durbar yes, Square. The entrance again, or a entrance, should I say, where you have to pay. Yeah, they have a few entrances, yeah. So no matter where you go, it is going to cost you a thousand 
per person in order to enter this Durban Square. I think for locals it's for free, and then for Sark country people, uh, they well pay like a little bit less, like 150 only, like India, India and Pakistan, Pakistan, Sri Lanka, I think the, those areas. The areas that are close to here. Yeah, we have a flea market in okay. front of the the Taleju yeah. Temple. I don't and that think is you can huge. Get inside there. No, I don't think we can get inside, but I mean, yeah, it's quite a nice view. You can actually see the stature of it from here. It's incredible. Do you see all the wooden carvings on it as well and the golden doors? And check it that I think that's gold at the top there. Wow, it's massive. <laughs> Hello, my man. How are you? You're good. What is this? So sweet. Sweet? What's the name? Don't know the name? Name, name? I'm so sorry. Son Papri. What? Son Papri. Son Papli. Is it sugar? Uh, sugar. Sugar? How much for one? 20 rupees. 20 rupees? Can we get one? One piece. piece. Yeah. That three, looks good. Three piece, piece 15. Three piece 15? No, just one piece. Thank you. There you go. Danyavar. Danyavar. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Name again? Super. Son Papri. Son Papi. Okay. Thank you. <laughs> oh. Yes, your sweetie. Thank you. <laughs> that looks interesting. It's called Sun Papi. Maybe I'm wrong, but it kind of looks like a candy floss type of texture in like a cake format. So we're going to give it a little taste. Apparently it's supposed to be sweet. Don't know what I'm eating, but here we go. Oh, it's like a candy flux sugary type texture. I think the closest thing I can put it to is the is like a candy flux format. Good. Let me taste it. He's given us like a newspaper to keep it in. Mmm. <laughs> That's candy flour. Yeah. Mm. Cool. Oh well. Nice little snack. It's almost got a peanut taste. It does. I think there's maybe like peanuts mixed with it. Mm. And I think this is made almost on a stove with the corn flour and then like pulled apart like we saw in, in Sri Lanka. Sri Lanka in candy, yeah. But this is really nice, it like melts away in your mouth. It's quite flaky, it's all over my t-shirt now. <laughs> mm. Okay, to the next place. <laughs> As future are starting to get very, very busy. I mean, it's just crazy. There's so many shops here. And I think everyone's coming to do shopping. Everyone's got a bag. Yeah, you can see some people shopping. Here's a popular store. So many clothes, eh? They're such nice clothes as well. I think I'm going to need to come on a shopping spree here. Uh, no, you're not. <laughs> <laughs> Our bags are small. We've said this. <laughs> Woo! Wow. So we're actually trying to see if we can find some lassi, as there is some lassi here in Nepal. And we've tried lassi in Pakistan, we've tried lassi in India. So I think it's only fair for us to try lassi in Nepal and see which one is the best. Oh, but we're going to have to get through the crowds first. Oh, it's starting to rain. Woo, check this. Welcome to Kathmandu. Oh, let's just go. Yeah. Let's just cross. Oh, there's lassi. <laughs> Yo, there's so many people. It looks good, right? So you might as well try it from here. Look at this, Lassie. It even has like raisins and peanuts on the top. Hello, how are you? How are you? Good, good. Is this Lassie? Lassie? How much for one cup? Big one, 90 rupees. 90 rupees? How small Lassie's? Two small ones, please. Thank you. Little, little brother. Check it out. Oh, sorry. Thank you. Welcome. Get Thank you. Thank you. Oh, it's nice and cold, hey? Yeah. Nice Ooh. and cold. Okay, let's Thank get away you. from here. Wow, this is a very cold lassi. And I love that there's raisins and nuts at the top here as well. I've never seen that in a lassi before. I'm trying to walk slowly so I don't mess, but there's so many people around me. <laughs> there's no break, eh? You've just got to like go in order, bang, boom. Oh, Cheers. yours is licking. Oh, no. Cheers, it's chaos, there's chaos here. Okay, cheers. Cheers. <laughs> Let me help you there. Let's okay. taste this. Mm. This is so yummy. Nepal, you have the best lassi, I'm not going to lie. This is delicious. I 
think what makes it is the crunchiness on top. Yeah. And it's super sweet. It's so much sweeter than the other lassies I've tasted. A proper yogurt drink. This is my favorite. I love lassie. If you've been following us on our journey, you'll know that lassie has recently become my favorite drink. So mm. I actually don't think it matters where I am in the world. A lassie is always going to be good to me. <laughs> Cheers. Cheers. No, what? Say hello, say hello. Oh, yeah, hello. What's your name? What's Sanjay Kumar. Sanjay. 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 Oh. And your name? Brady. Brady? Yes. Nice to meet you. How old are you? I'm Twelve and eleven. Nice to meet you. Oh, Sanjay. Let's go like this. <laughs> Bye. <laughs> <laughs> they so just look like two best friends, just like walking the streets. <laughs> They're so cute. <laughs> Alright, let's go find some momos. <laughs> thank you, very good lassie, hey, number one. <laughs> I should stop saying thank you and say Danyavad. That's what it is, Danyavad. Oh, where's the end? <laughs> Did you down your lassie? Now I've got all the sweets in my lassie. I already had lassie, thank you. We just had. <laughs> you can see by my moustache. <laughs> I think I have a yogurt massage. <laughs> His was actually 80 Nepalese rupees, so I think we should have bought theirs. I think it's one entire shop. So we are looking for a place called Famous Momos. According to Google Maps, it should be somewhere here. But all I see is bubble tea. And tea houses. And tea houses, yeah. I mean, there's bubble tea, bubble tea, bubble tea, bubble tea. I don't know where this Momo famous place. Momo place is. It's supposed to be. Hey, there! Oh, there, okay. You see it? Famous Momos. Apparently, this has got some good Momos. Oh, oh and they wow. are busy. There's people even sitting on the steps. You know, a place is good when there are so many people, so I'm keen to try their Momos. Since 1962. Narayan Daikor famous Momo. I hope I said that correct. So let's see if we can try some of the local food here in Nepal and taste the Momo. I think we order over here. <coughs> Seems like it. There. Yeah. Seems to be an Go get a spot. <laughs> so here's a kitchen. There you can see they're making some Momos inside here. The kitchen's actually pretty small. There you can see how tiny it is. Oh, is there upstairs kitchen as well? Ah, oh, okay. Number 50. Okay, so kitchen. There we are. There's a, a Momo. Hi, Namaste. Can I please get one buff Momo? Danyavad. <laughs> How small is our table? <laughs> it's such a cute little shop. I'm glad that we actually got a space to sit. I actually have this little log that I need to sit on. <laughs> Leanne's just sitting on a little log. <laughs> so I think now we just need to wait for our order. We paid 180 for the Momo and we got a buff Momo. Oh, come here. check this little shop, literally tiny, tiny, tiny. Then you have basically this table and this table here and then small ones outside. But yeah, mainly people are sitting on the stairs. Oh. Sorry, squeeze, squeeze. <laughs> Three number. Thank you. Here we go. Oh, those look oh delicious. God. Super steamy. <laughs> so this is Momo's. Mo means steam. So this is basically steamed dumplings. And it's a proper Nepali street food dish. Like it's the go-to street food dish. And then they have sauce. I don't know what sauce this is. I think it might be like a peanut or a tangy sauce. But I've seen others pour the sauce on top of the Momo. So let's do that. It's kind of what the momos look like. They're these little balls. And inside is the buffalo meat. Sure, that looks delicious. That looks good, right? And they also have some chili. Do you think we should put some chili in the sauce? Yes, let's give it some flavor. Should I just sprinkle it over? Yeah, just don't kill us. That should be fun, right? I think so. Yeah, so these momos. Hi, oh, thank oh, you. Thank you. <laughs> no. These momos can basically be filled with chicken or veg and like Danny said in our case, buffalo meat. So I'm gonna try. I'm excited to try some momos. I hope it's not too hot to bite into. 
<laughs> is it a bit hot? <laughs> that is just super yummy. Like a normal dumpling that I've tasted, but the sauce and the chili just makes it extra flavorful in your mouth. It's really good. Ooh, is it good? It's so good. You're gonna love it. Okay. Don't know what sauce it is. Is it hot, hey? It's hot, so be careful. It might burn your taste buds. Mm. <laughs> it's almost like a little spice ball inside there with the what's the outside layer? I think the outside layer is like a almost like a pastry type. Pastry, yeah, and inside like a meatball. Yeah, but it's got like herbs. It tastes like Italian herbs, salt, some good cumin flavors and stuff like that. It's just jam-packed ball of flavor, almost like what a Turkish kebab would be. Turkish kebab, grab that little piece, put it inside there, wrap it up and you've got a moment. It is really, really good. We're going to be having more of these, right? Oh yes, definitely. <laughs> yeah. I can definitely see why well, it's a Nepalese favorite to go to for street food. That was super delicious. That was amazing. <laughs> yeah. Definitely going to be having way too many momos here in Nepal. <laughs> That's for sure. But it brings us to the end of the episode today. We're going to be still exploring a little bit of Kathmandu and as well as other places here in Nepal. So make sure that you've liked this video and that you've subscribed. What? That you subscribe. Oh, okay. Subscribe. <laughs> Gee whiz. It's the delicious momos. <laughs> I'm just salivating on those <laughs> momos. I feel the same. But yeah, but subscribe. Like I was saying, subscribe. <laughs> and follow us on the rest of our Nepali adventures. Uh, see you in the next one.